All right. Good morning, everyone. And again, welcome to today's Mid-Atlantic Tours presenter informational webinar. My name is Sarah Lewitt. I am the Program Director, Performing Arts, and the Accessibility Coordinator at Mid-Atlantic Arts. I use she and her pronouns, and I'm a white woman with very short brown hair, and uh, today I'm wearing a green blouse with a gray sweater over it. I'm zooming in today from my home, which is located on lands known as Baltimore, Maryland. I want to acknowledge the Piscataway and Susquehannock peoples as historic stewards of this land, and also acknowledge the enduring presence of the Piscataway, Lumbee, and Eastern Band of Cherokee community members in Baltimore City today. I'm glad you could join us for today's webinar uh, to talk about the Mid-Atlantic Tours program. I'm here with my colleague, Sarah Tune, who is the program specialist at Mid-Atlantic Arts. Today, I'm going to share information about Mid-Atlantic Tours. I'm going to focus on the process for presenters to receive subsidies through this program to present an artist on this year's roster. This webinar is meant to serve as an overview and a resource, but I do encourage you to review the program guidelines, which you can find at midatlanticarts.org. You can reach out to me with questions at any time about this program. Uh, my email is slewitis at midatlanticarts.org. It's uh, going in the chat now, and I'll share that a few other times through this webinar. You can also reach me via phone um, at 410-539-6656, extension 110. For today's webinar, I have about 30 minutes of information to go over with you, and then we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. If you have a question at any point during the webinar, I encourage you to put it in the Q&A box which you can find on the Zoom control panel, which may be at the top or bottom of your screen. Live captioning is also provided. We have Kayla here with us today. To turn on live captions on the control bar of your Zoom screen, select more and then select show captions. Throughout your Mid-Atlantic tours process, if you are in need of any kind of accommodation, please contact me, Sarah Lewitt at 410-539-6656, extension 110, or at my email, slewitis at midatlanticarts.org. Before we get started with our discussion about Mid-Atlantic Tours, I want to share about, a bit about Mid-Atlantic Arts. Uh, Mid-Atlantic Arts supports artists, presenters, and organizations through unique programming, grant support, partnerships, and information sharing. It was founded in 1979 and is aligned with the Mid-Atlantic region's state arts councils, arts agencies, as well as the National Endowment for the Arts. Mid-Atlantic Arts is one of six regional arts organizations, or RAOs. We combine state and federal funding with private support from corporations, foundations, and individuals to nurture diverse artistic expression while connecting people to meaningful experiences within the arts uh, in our region and beyond. You can learn more about Mid-Atlantic Arts and our work at midatlanticarts.org. And I also encourage you to learn more about the all of the regional arts organizations, which you can do at the RAO website, which is usregionalarts.org. Both those links are going in the chat now. All right, now let's talk about Mid-Atlantic Tours. Mid-Atlantic Tours is a grant opportunity for presenters in the Mid-Atlantic geographic region. Uh, that region includes Delaware, uh, the District of Columbia, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Puerto Rico, the US Virgin Islands, Virginia, West Virginia, as well as native nations that share any of the geography of the places I just listed. Mid-Atlantic Tours is funded through the National Endowment for the Arts Regional Engagement Program, which was formerly known as the Regional Touring Program. This program provides funding to all of the RAOs to support touring across each RAO's states and regions. 
You can line, uh, find out more about this program at the NEA's website. The link is going in the chat now. Mid-Atlantic Tours supports the robust touring of selected roster artists throughout the Mid-Atlantic region, uh, which includes at least two engagement activities in each presenter's community. We will talk more about what constitutes an engagement activity in a moment. This program supports touring between July 1st, 2024 and June 30th, 2025. Um, I really recommend that you review the guidelines which are available at midatlanticarts.org. We're gonna cover a lot of what's in there today, but uh, I, I still really encourage you to check that out um, as you go into the Mid-Atlantic Tours booking process. The uh, current roster has been announced. And uh, I'm very happy to share that the uh, the artists are fabulous this year. Um, I'm I'm just so excited to see how all of these tours come together. Um, we have Undos Chase Andres, Adam Booth, Alex and Olmsted, Deborah Ann Bird, Long Point String Band, and Plena Libre. You can review the full roster at midatlanticarts.org. And I also encourage you to attend another event virtually that we have coming up um, later this month. On December 18th, 2023, we have a roster artist share that is gonna be a chance for you to hear from each roster artist directly about the work that they could bring to your community, including work samples. There will also be a time for questions and meeting directly with each roster artist and tour manager through breakout rooms. Um, as part of that event. So if you are curious about one or some of these artists, please do plan to attend that event. Uh, we, it will also be recorded, so you can check it out at a later date if you're not available. So eligibility for this program. If you are watching this webinar, it is likely that you are interested in engaging a Mid-Atlantic Tours roster artist. To meet eligibility requirements, for this support, presenters need to be based in the Mid-Atlantic region, um, all those states and jurisdictions that I listed earlier. Um, the organization needs to be a 501c3 nonprofit or a unit of state or local government or a federally recognized Indian tribal government. The organization needs to demonstrate organizational administrative capacity to complete all of the required project components and the organization needs to be in good standing with Mid-Atlantic Arts with uh, no overdue or outstanding final reports or grant documents. If you do have some overdue final reports, uh, be in touch with me. We can talk about how we can get that remedied uh, in time for you to be eligible for this support. So how are we defining presenter? For this program, Mid-Atlantic Arts defines presenter as an organization that financially compensates an artist or company that is a separate entity from the presenter for performances and engagement activities in the presenter's community. So producing organizations that solely create artistic work or assemble artists to perform um, are not eligible. For this program, that would specifically mean that if you are one of the roster artists, you could not self-present through this program. Um, if you're listening and you're not, um, one of the roster artists or on their management team, uh, you and you meet all of the requirements I just listed, um, you would be eligible to be considered a presenter. And then what about presenting history? Organizations that uh, meet all of the presenting requirements I just described do not need to have an additional history of engaging professional touring artists as an ongoing or significant part of their organization's activities to be eligible. If you do have that history, we'll ask to hear about it. But if you don't, that's okay. We'll just want to know what your administrative plan for engaging the artist within your existing staffing structure looks like uh, among your other organizational priorities. So how does the program work? Presenters uh, reach out directly to a roster artist. So if you're watching and you're a presenter, you're gonna make that first point of contact with a roster artist um, and uh, invite them to a conversation. You will negotiate the terms of the engagement directly with that roster artist tour manager by no later than March 28th, 2024. 
And by that March 28th date, you must submit a countersigned letter of agreement to the tour manager. So you and the tour manager should have a, a letter of agreement that describes all of the terms of your engagement uh, by the 28th. Um, both of you should have signed and the tour manager should have it in hand. That is how you will know that you are in the running to be considered for funding for this program. From there, tour managers make funding recommendations to Mid-Atlantic Arts. So from there, after receiving the funding recommendation from a tour manager, presenters will receive an intent to award notification from Mid-Atlantic Arts. Um, that will happen, and then Mid-Atlantic Arts will issue grant applications to presenters based on the tour manager uh, recommendation. That will happen in May 2024. The grants will formally be awarded in June of 2024, and touring will take place between July 1st, 2024 and June 30th, 2025. So next, I want to talk about uh, relationships a bit. This program is not designed to be a menu that you can select a prepackaged performance from. Instead, I invite you to use the roster as an opportunity to begin a relationship with one or multiple roster artists. Uh, as you're interested, or to continue a relationship if you've already uh, worked with one of these artists in the past. We ask the artists to list an approximate fee range on the roster, but that range should be considered the start of a conversation, not the end. Use it as a jumping off point to begin your conversation and know that the roster artist may need to reassess that range based on the specifics of touring to your community. If there is an artist that you are interested in working with on the roster, you'll want to reach out to that tour manager and request a meeting, as I said. Um, if you filled out the presenter interest survey earlier this uh, fall and gave permission to share your contact information, the roster artist may also reach out to you directly. From there, you'll begin your dialogue. Um, one thing that you'll need to figure out is what your engagement activities will look like. So let's talk about that next. Um, the roster artist, the tour manager, and you, the presenter, will all work together to plan at least two engagement activities at each venue. And at least one of those two engagement activities must include a performance or performative component of at least 30 minutes that is open to the public. It can be ticketed or free, um, and it can happen multiple times throughout the engagement or just once. Um, it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to, uh, as I said, be a, a free performance, but it does need to be open and available so that anybody might have the opportunity to uh, purchase a ticket. All right. Next up, uh, potential grant awards through this program. Depending on the recommendation from the tour manager, el eligible presenters can receive funding support um, as follows. The uh, artist compensation subsidy is the first section of a uh, possible award amount, and that can be up to 50% of the negotiated artist compensation. Um, that can include the artistic salary or fees. It can include housing, per diem, and travel if you negotiate that into your artist fee, but it doesn't have to. The minimum request uh, in that category is $1,000. And then other eligible expenses up to $2,000 um, in addition to support project expenses. So for example, if you were in dialogue with a tour manager for an engagement with an artist fee of $8,000, the maximum subsidy you could receive through Mid-Atlantic Tours would be $6,000. And the breakdown of that would be $4,000 as a 50% match to that $8,000 artist fee plus $2,000 for other eligible expenses. I do want to let you know that tour managers may recommend a lower percentage than 50% if they are working to distribute their funds across many presenters. So, you know, even though 50% is the maximum, they may come to you and say, we can recommend you for 40% of the negotiated fee, for example. 
You are welcome and encouraged to be clear with the artist about what you as the presenter need for this engagement to work. But do know that the roster artists are coordinating with many presenters and Mid-Atlantic Arts all at once uh, for this program. And they may need time to get back to you with exactly what the recommended amount will be. Um, I also want to let you know to keep in mind that the tour managers do not make the final funding uh, award offer. That will come from Mid-Atlantic Arts. Okay, potential grant award details. It's really important to know that the grant award must be matched on a one-to-one -one basis with non-federal funds. As I mentioned, this program is funded by the National Endowment for the Arts, and the NEA passes down their dollar-for-dollar -dollar match requirements to Mid-Atlantic Arts, and so in turn, we, ask, uh, we require that grantees for this program match the funds that we distribute. So this can include um, anything from, uh, you know, other types of funds you're raising, like ticket sales. It can include foundation support. Um, it can include really any other kind of funds that you're that you're gathering, as long as they aren't coming from the federal government. Uh, in addition, the funding is uh, restricted to the specific cost of the program. So. Um, we do not fund food and beverage purchases uh, based on NEA requirements, and we also require that Mid-Atlantic Tours artists not be brought into your community as part of a gala or an event that is a fundraising focused event. Um, this language of galas, parties, picnics, or other community gatherings comes straight from the NEA, and I do want to say um, reach out to me if you're curious, because some of these types of events are you know directly uh, <clears throat> contrasting with what an artist may want to bring to your community, and we may be able to work out the language um, around a community gathering, for example, um, if it is the right kind of community engagement fit for uh, the roster artist and your community. But generally, the the gala situation is uh, is a no go for these types of grants. Next, I want to share the program's funding priorities. These are things that Mid-Atlantic Arts has asked the tour managers to keep in mind. And I'll also let you, as a presenter, know that this is what Mid-Atlantic Arts wants to prioritize with these funds. Um, geographic breadth for each tour. So we ask the tour managers to make sure that no more than 40% of their funding allocation is recommended to one state or jurisdiction in the region. We also, uh, you know, ask for a focus on small and mid-sized presenters. Not to say that large presenters are not eligible, but the priority in terms of allocating the majority of funds, uh, we like to ask that that be prioritized for small and mid-sized presenters. Additionally, presenters serving rural communities, and of course, presenters whose engagement activities align with the roster artist goals for the tour. Next, I want to share more details about the letter of agreement, which is required as part of your process negotiating with the roster artist tour manager. And as I mentioned before, this letter of agreement needs to be countersigned and in hand of the tour manager by March 28, 2024. The letter needs to include your, uh, the presenter's name and contact information, the roster artist's name, the details for a minimum of two engagement activities. And ideally, we'd like to see the date, time, and location, if you know that at the time that you're writing the agreement. The negotiated artist compensation needs to be listed. The proposed negotiated grant amount from Mid-Atlantic Art, if known. And a mutual statement on accessibility planning for the engagement. Um, I do encourage you, once you've submitted the letter of agreement, to hold on to a copy um, for yourself. Hopefully, you're doing this anyway, but know that we will, Mid-Atlantic Arts will be asking you to submit a letter, that same letter of agreement, when you submit your um, actual grant application for this program, which takes place after you've been recommended for funding by the tour manager. 
Um, I want to talk a bit more about the accessibility statement that I mentioned. The statement should describe the plans surrounding accessibility for the engagement. Since these funds are for the, uh, from the NEA, all grantees must comply with ADA requirements. Um, your statement can be as direct as stating that the presenter and the roster artist will collaborate to ensure all ADA requirements are met for the engagement. Or you could also say something like, um, in addition to meeting all ADA requirements, the presenter will provide these accessibility accommodations and you could list those out. These are some examples. You may consider ASL interpretation, a sensory friendly performance, or large print program. These are just a few examples. There are many other types of accommodations you may want to consider. Or a third possibility would be to lay out a portion of the budget specifically reserved for accessibility if that is applicable to your project. Um, I do wanna emphasize that your funding amount will not necessarily vary based on how fleshed out your accessibility statement is but you and the roster artist may choose to direct some of the other eligible support funds towards accessibility. Um, that is permissible as long as it's a direct project expense. The purpose of asking presenters and artists to include this accessibility statement is to encourage both the artist and presenter to be discussing accessibility measures well ahead of the performance engagement rather than waiting until later in the process when it may be too late to budget or plan effectively. Um, I'm available to talk through you know, everything here, but uh, in particular, if you have questions about this accessibility statement, I can think through what makes sense for your community. So now let's talk about the application process for Mid-Atlantic Tours. Um, as I mentioned, the letter of agreement comes first, that comes before that March 28th deadline. Um, you know, you've done that, you've submitted your letter of agreement to the tour manager. The tour manager will then make the recommendation to Mid-Atlantic Art. And then once you've received a tentative award notification, these next steps will, will um, begin to happen. So in May of 2024, presenters who have received a funding recommendation uh, will receive that tentative award notification and uh, the application will be made up of these three components, a letter of agreement, narrative, and budget. We've talked about the letter of agreement already. Next, let's talk about narrative. There are two narrative questions that presenters who are invited to apply for Mid-Atlantic Tour support will receive. You can also find these questions in the program guidelines if you'd like to reference them later, but we'll ask you to discuss the description of the planned engagement activities, as well as uh, the barriers to participation for your organization's uh, audiences, artists, and staff, and how you as the presenter will be addressing these barriers as part of your engagement. The third component of the application process is the budget. So the presenter will be asked to submit a project budget that includes the negotiated artist compensation as it is described in the letter of agreement, um, as well as the requested subsidy amount. We will provide a budget template for you to use uh, in the application. So you won't submit uh, the one that you may use internally, but we'll ask you to translate that into our online portal application. For the payment timeline, if you are awarded funding through Mid-Atlantic Tours, the initial 90% of that funding will be paid 30 days prior to the first engagement activity, as long as a fully executed contract has been submitted. One exception to that is that if your project is taking place very early in the project period, like July or August of 2024, We'll release the funds just as soon as we can um, upon grant approval by Mid-Atlantic Arts Board of Directors, and will still require a submission of a fully executed contract between you and the roster artist. The final 10% will be paid upon the submission of a final report. So here are important dates and deadlines for this program. December 18th from uh, 2 to 3.30, I invite you to join us for uh, 
of Mid-Atlantic Tours roster artists share. Um, this is, a, as I mentioned, a really great opportunity for you to hear directly from the roster artists and see if there is an artist that you'd like to begin a conversation with. Uh, we will have breakout sessions at the end of that gathering, so you can start your conversation right then and there. Um, we'll also record the session if you're not able to join live, but you'd like to watch uh, the artist speak about their work. March 28th, once again, is your booking deadline, so you will need to have a letter of agreement to tour managers by the state if you are interested in, um, you know, working with an art roster artist this year. In May 2024, invited presenters will complete a short application. June 2024, your formal award notifications will be sent. And July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025 is the project period for this program. All right. So again, if you have any questions at any point throughout this program, please reach out to me. You can uh, reach out via email or phone, however you're most comfortable. I am extremely available to talk with you um, and brainstorm about how you might make a, an engagement with one of this year's roster artists work. Um, as I said before, I'm just so enthusiastic about the artists on the roster this year. They're awesome. And they're all great to work with too, um, as someone who's been emailing back and forth with them quite a bit recently. So I, I just really encourage you, if you're interested at all, to start up a conversation with the tour manager um, and see if it'd be a good fit. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna stop the share. And uh, I know we have a few questions in the Q&A already. Um, all right, can, uh, okay, our first question is from Ellen. Hi, Ellen. Can a presenter include a Mid-Atlantic to uh, Tours touring artist in their separate NEA application? Thank you. The answer is yes, you can include a, a roster artist in your NEA application. The thing to keep in mind is that your grant from Mid-Atlantic Arts cannot include the funding that you may receive from the NEA to present that artist. You could use NEA dollars to support project expenses if your expenses go beyond the scope of the Mid-Atlantic Arts matching portion of your grant. So I used the example of that $8,000 um, artist fee before. Um, let's use that same example and say your artist fee is $8,000, um, but the artist, uh, the roster artist is only able to negotiate with you like a 25% artist fee grant. So let's say $2,000 out of that um, is awarded through Mid-Atlantic Arts and they do not recommend any other eligible expenses. So you've received $2,000 from Mid-Atlantic Arts. You match that $2,000 with another $2,000 from non-federal funds. You still have $4,000 in your budget to make up. That funding could um, be supported through your NEA grant. Uh, it's a little complicated. Please reach out to me if you want to talk through that um, as it relates to a specific project budget. Okay. Amy. Hi, Amy. Asks. Uh, Re-engagement activity. Do I understand correctly that there is one publicly available performance counting as one of the activities and the other is more loosely defined, i.e. workshop, masterclass, in school assembly, et cetera? Or is it two engagement activities plus the public performance? Um, so Amy, the first thing that you said is correct here. So the, the two engagement activities, one is your public performance and one is a second engagement activity of any kind. We're not asking for two engagement activities on top of the performance, uh, just acknowledging that the public performance itself is an engagement activity. So you can, uh, in addition to that public performance, which as I mentioned, does need to be open to the public, doesn't have to be free, but does have to, the ticketing, if there is ticketing, has to be open to anyone. The second community engagement activity does not necessarily have to be open to the public in the same way. It could be a, uh, you know, a school performance, for example, or a school workshop that is only available or only open to the members of that school community. That is fine um, if that second activity is supporting your public performance components um, and supporting the way that you and the roster artist want to work together in your community, that is fine. Debbie, hi Debbie, asks, 
how do you define a small and mid-sized presenter? Great question, Debbie. This is something that we are working on uh, getting more clear on, frankly, internally. Um, but for now, that is a self-defined kind of metric. We will ask um, the roster artists to, uh, the roster artist tour managers to consider in their recommendation that there are some small and mid-sized presenters among larger presenters. Um, you know, presenters, we, we don't have a hard and fast budget line for this, but, you know, off the cuff, I would say over a hundred thousand dollar, you know, annual budget um, would be a mid to large size presenter. Uh, but as I mentioned, organizationally, we do not have a clear codified definition of small to mid size. So um, if you do feel that you may be living in that mid to larger presenter category, don't fret. Um, you are still absolutely eligible for this program and eligible to receive support for this program. Um, we just want to make sure that we are also leaving space uh, to support smaller organizations in addition to larger organizations with these funds. All right. Uh, that is uh, that was all the questions we had in the Q&A, but I am uh, I'm going to hang out here for a little bit longer um, to see if any other questions come in or if any clarification is needed from what I just went over. Um, if you do not have any more questions, I want to thank you so much for joining um, this webinar today. It will be recorded or it is being recorded and it will be available on our website at uh, the uh, Mid-Atlantic Tours program page sometime next week if you'd like to reference it again or share it with any presenting colleagues. Um, so that is it. and. Uh, no problem. If you need to sign off, go ahead. Thanks, Debbie. Thanks, Ellen, uh, for your for your notes in the Q and A. And uh, for anyone else, please do put your questions in. Otherwise, we can we can wrap up. I'm going to hang out for two or three more minutes to make sure no more questions come in. Okay, seeing none and seeing that our participants list has dropped off, we're going to call it uh, a day for today's webinar. Thanks for joining us and again reach out with any questions at any time about this program.